Well, how to there, Internet. Uh, this video is in response to you rock Riddix on the Tau 40k subreddit. Uh, he asked me to explain my technique for painting camo. Uh, this technique was taught to me by a guy going by Crabman uh, in my local 40k community. And if it weren't for him, these would not have looked as good as they do. Now, this is what I'm calling a basic three-color forest camo, so it should work for that three-color minimum for that some tournaments have, and they'll still look pretty decent with uh, very little effort. Uh, and this is meant to be a sort of fast paint technique, and it'll help you get a, get a lot of models done real quick. So, to kind of demonstrate that, I'm going to paint two models at once. And I, I stuck with more or less the same pattern for all my army that I built, and I gave the HQs a slightly different thing with a little bit darker undertones. And I gave the uh, H, like the leaders of each unit a kind of some special love. Like the Shah's Rays and the Shah's Wees have their bonding knives. And the, the HQs have that darker uh, under armor color. Sort of represent the different uniforms between the regulars and the HQs. Uh, and, and yes, I did just put a plate on a fidget spinner for this. And uh, also, here's your warning. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I only really started getting into 40k models and the board game over the past few months, and I had really no experience painting before that. Uh, this has just been from me figuring out along the way and some advice given to me from different people. So, you know, don't be afraid to experiment and have fun. This is, this is all about having fun. All right, now for the paints, I'm going to be using all of the, or all Citadel contrast paints. Now, I'm not going to try to sell you on them since GW ain't paying me to do that. <coughs> but uh, they are pretty darn cool. And there's really only four main paints that we're going to be using with, with most of our units here. And it's just Snakebite Leather, Wildwood, Creed Camo, and Militarum Green. I don't, I don't know about the other ones, but that last color, like whatever the lightest color of your camo is going to be, it probably should be a contrast paint. Or something that's like transparent like that. You really want to be able to see through it. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be using is this contrast medium. Uh, I'm using a lot of it. And it's stuff like Mike's Hot Sauce. You can put it in everything. Uh, and this is absolutely key to getting the camo to come out how you want to. You're going to use this stuff to dilute the lightest color that you're going to be using. To make it really, really thin. <laughs> and, there's some, and these are just some other random paints I'm going to be using. And um, one thing that is essential is to have uh, at least one e extra of this base color. I'm using gray here, but whatever your base color is, just in case you make any mistakes, it's, uh, it's good to have. Alright, let's get started with the snake bite leather. Uh, we'll use this for what would be the cloth or under areas. Uh, it's good to try to be clean with this. But it's okay to get really messy. That's why we have the extra base paint. Mistakes are okay. And remember that any small little mistakes will probably just blend in with the camo anyways. And if you do make any kind of big mistakes, it's really not that big a deal. And if you're using this technique for a different color scheme... I recommend using some sort of like a similar striking contrast against whatever the camo you're going for to give a more dynamic look to your models. You know, like if you're going with like a, a desert, maybe use a white color. Or if you're using like an urban camo, maybe like an almost gray-blue color. You know, there's, there's, there's several different ways you could do it. And I think a lot of them would look really, really good. Uh, that since I really only have Tau to paint right now, I'm also going to paint this Crisis suit. But you can totally paint whatever you wanted with this particular scheme. And then same as with the Stealth suit, we're just going to get all around the Under Armour areas with this lighter tone of brown. Now I think Catachan would probably really look, look really good with this general sort of color scheme. Obviously probably not as much of this brown, but you know, this general idea seems like it would work pretty good. And, and if you're trying to change up the color scheme, you just shift the, the tones for the environment. You know, like yellows for a desert or like the grays for an urban. And again, remember, it's totally okay to mess this up, especially at this first stage. Because it, nothing else you can really mess up. You just 
clean it up with the cleanup paint. All right, after that color is fully dried and any mistakes been cleaned up, uh, let's move on to the wildwood. I like doing this second uh, since it's being used in both the camo and for the feet and gloves of the model. I like this idea of having different colors for the different areas of the model. It gives a more complex look, even if there's really only four primary colors being used. The, the stealth suit isn't really suctioned well for this, but it's certainly possible. And uh, before we put this model down and move on to the next, uh, let's draw some brown lines on it. Uh, this is to slightly resemble the way trees tend to have the dark brown branches in the, uh, traveling in lines, but the lines aren't really perfectly straight. It's sort of that same idea that you would see with, with like a lot of different types of like regular camouflage patterns. And uh, if we were to move on to the stealth suit, we're going to kind of do the same thing. And the distinction between the legs and the feet is really apparent with this model. And you can see why I think it's probably a good idea to have those two distinct yet similar colors sort of patterned together like that. Uh, if you've ever been walking through a forest, uh, you know, the ground tends to be darker than the tree trunks, especially as you get higher up in the tree trunks. I think it has to do with the light that's coming through it. And so kind of what I'm doing here is sort of emulating that by making the feet darker and then the higher up on the legs a little bit lighter. And then the uh, the hands matching the feet just sort of made sense to me, so I went with it. You know, like how you're, like if you're wearing dark gloves, they'd match dark boots or, I don't know, kind of uniform type of thing. And since this is meant to be a fast technique and you're supposed to do it with a lot of units at once, by the time you finish with the Wildwood on the last model, you should be more or less ready to start applying the Creed camo to the first model. And th the difference between doing this and the Wildwood is that you're at a lot more, uh, like we're using more blotches this time, like it's more blobs on the model rather than those lines that we were doing for the brown. Uh, and since I'm using these contrast paints, I kind of want them to do their thing where they get a little bit darker in some spots and lighter in other spots. But I don't want it to be too dynamic because that kind of like throws off the camouflage and it makes it a little bit too busy. And you won't even really notice that much of a difference too much. And the, the key in this is to kind of be as minimalist as possible because the more of the, these darker colors you're going to use or add on to the model, the darker the pattern will be overall. And if you're trying to go for a lighter pattern, then you want less of those colors. Now, you, you could, in theory, let's say you want to do more of like a tiger stripe pattern. Oh, you could you could easily just follow, like you could just do kind of thicker brown lines and then kind of thicker green lines and then just the other background color just sort of over those to make it a little bit easier but I, I kind of like it like this a little bit better and it, it, it is pretty easy to get carried away and if you start adding too much color on the model it makes it look kind of busy you know like if you you started using like four or five or six different colors in your camo it started looking pretty busy pretty quick like if you were using us if you're painting larger models it might look better but with these smaller models it won't really look good with that many colors going on at once and a whole bunch of them all at once. And if you're overthinking it like I'm doing, you're kind of just wasting a whole bunch of time since this is meant to be doing a whole bunch of models all at once. Now that we've got all the dark colors done, it's time for the hard part. We're going to be mixing our Militarum Green with the Contrast Medium. And you definitely want to give them both a really good shake because the Militarum Green tends to have some... Uh, white that'll settle out at the bottom but you want this to be a really smooth color and you you want to first have your easel out like some place where you can be mixing a pretty fair amount of paint with uh, one thing to remember whenever you're mixing paint is to it absolutely sucks to run out of the mixed paint mix way more than you think you'll need trust me i know it sounds wasteful but i literally used all of what i mixed and could have taken some more and how I do this is I basically just try to get a pretty good fat glob of the paint onto the uh, uh, onto the easel over there. 
And while I'm doing that, it's kind of hard to measure the exact amount of paint, which is why I don't really give you an exact formula with this. But I used about eight, seven or eight good sized globs of the green. And then I cleaned off the brush really, really well because you do not want cross contamination between your contrast color or your green and your transfer medium or your transition medium. This medium is way too useful to get ruined with one specific color. And what I'm trying to do is kind of that same idea of just splashing the color along the edge, trying not to let it mix in too much. But as you can probably see, the color just mixes a little bit. And you just, you try to got to be careful with it and have as little as you can get on the brush. I probably used a little bit too little of the medium on this and it, I probably could have thinned it down a little bit more. But this is pretty much how you do it. You just mix it together and you get it to about 50% of the medium, 50% of the color. Like when I did about 20 or 30 troops at once, I had that thing right there complete, almost completely full of the color and I still ran out before I was done. And how you know when it looks about right, you want it to be slightly lighter than that. Like you see how it's pulling along the side on that last stroke, how it's almost see-through? That's the color you really want it to be. Because when you're doing this, you're going to end up applying a couple different coats to it. And while you're doing that, a couple different coats, like you're really only applying one, but as you apply it, you kind of go over the same spot a couple times. And as you can see when I'm, I'm kind of testing it on that stealth suit, it looks pretty light. So I figured that this would end up looking pretty much how I wanted it to. So I took a pretty good fat glob of it and just started smearing it across like it was a wash. I think that's the best way to put it or describe it is it's a wash. Well, anyways, as I was going through and just washing through all of these, I just went and did all of it. That's really all that there is to doing this, is just making sure that you've got a really good, clean mixture that you got of the transfer medium and the, and the green or whatever color it is you're using as your background. And you can, hopefully you should see why I say you can really use this with any color, color scheme for the camo, but you want to use your light color or the color that is going to be the most easy to make transparent because you're just washing it over everything else so that you can see the other colors through it. But like, you don't want it to be too thin either. Otherwise, it it barely tints it. It's, it's finding that really good medi medium that comes through practice. And as I go through this, I'll go through this dude, and I'll go through the stealth suit, or I'll go through the crisis suit, I should say, and then just try to make sure that I got all the main areas. Uh, one thing you'll kind of notice is I, I did miss putting the brown on the shin area of the stealth suit. But as you can probably see, it really isn't that big a deal. It kind of just blends in. And then any little specks that got left over from the under or from like the cloth and under armor area just blends right in. Hell, even when you accidentally splash a little bit of the... Uh, that background green color onto the the leather or like the snake bite leather it even blends in pretty darn well it's not like it's something you got to worry about all that much I was, I was actually pleasantly surprised with how this came out the first couple times i did it and as you can kind of see with that stealth suit it definitely does look pretty good and after all the green is fully coated onto the models you're pretty much good to go after this i was i'm gonna go through and add some little bit of details here and there you know just to make it look kind of special but there really isn't much more to do after this point like for example all i really did was add a little bit of metallics to like the jet pack and a little bit of the blue and red details and then just kind of the same type of thing with the crisis suit. There really isn't much to this. And this is really kind of just meant as a way to cheese out a whole bunch of really decent looking models really quick. And I, I really don't have any much more to say. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching if you watched all the way through until now. Uh, if you have anything else you might want me to try out, you know, like maybe try painting some stuff or showing how I magnetized the models that I magnetized or any of that stuff, 
I could totally try to do something like that. Just let me know down in the comments. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And like Brother uh, Baldemar always said, try to make some time for some fun today. Toodaloo! Descending. That's very out of character. And you're being illogical. That's even more out of character. Oh, no, no. You're right. Let us make use of a conventional stratagem involving copious amounts of invisibility with minimal effort on our part. Just like the Tau would. Fuck sneaking! Oh, shit. <laughs> you know what, <laughs> what? We'll break you to your military, you spouter!